Hi guys, it's Aria Pampa here, and today I just wanted to share with you something that I felt attacked me, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be better as a result of this. If you follow my channel, thank you very much, I appreciate it. If you don't already, please click on the subscribe button and follow and hit that notification bell so that anytime I release a new video, you're aware of it. Okay, let's get into it. I was listening to the audiobook by Seth Godin, which um, is called The Dip, and I felt personally attacked. I'll explain. Um, I mean, attacked is a strong word. Okay, but let me, let me explain, let me explain. Um, so he's been talking about the fact, the dip basically is the concept of the gap or the, the thing between being a beginner and being great or being the best at something, right? Most people quit at the dip. The dip is the point where it's really, really hard and difficult and it's easier to quit than it is to stay on. And most people quit for different reasons. Um, you know, I mean, well, for the same, for really everything boils down to the same thing. They might give it different colors or different reasons why, but the main reason is they couldn't stick it out. They couldn't put in the effort to um, be good enough at it. But here's the other thing that he pointed out, which I think hit me quite a bit. It's the fact that you also need to know what to quit so that you can focus on the, on the activity or the venture that you should stick to. Let me repeat that. You need to know what to quit so that you can then double down and focus on the one place or one or one area that you should stay at. I think for me, that is where I've got an issue. Um, not an issue with the book, um, an issue personally, actually, because my issue is that I'm, I'm good at a lot of things. I'm not great at everything, but I'm good at a lot of things. And the danger with that is that I dabble. I can do a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of this, a bit of that, and maybe not necessarily take the, take the focus to be just to choose one area to focus on. I think that's, that's the challenge. And what he recommends is that you choose an area where you can realistically um, be the best and then double down on it and quit the things that um, maybe you're okay at but are not the things that are going to help you get to where you want to get to. For me, that's interesting. He said the mature choice, basically there are a few choices you have. You have um, the brave choice, which is to start a venture or start a business or learning something um, and know that there's going to be a dip. You're going to focus. And even when the dip comes, you go through it and you get, up, get out on the other side. That's the brave choice. The mature choice is not to, is to realize the amount of effort it's going to take, realize the fact that you don't have the grit to actually stick through with it, and then decide not to try or not to start it at all because you know that you're gonna it's taking away time and energy and um attention from the things that you could be focusing on then the bad choice or stupid choice i think is what he called it was to put all the effort into starting something put in a bit more effort you know and keep going keep going only to then quit at the end when you probably knew at the start that you probably you weren't gonna go through it because you've wasted time, you've wasted resources, you've wasted a lot of um, activities. <sighs> that hit hard because for me, I just wonder, you know, what, what exactly are the things I'm doing currently and in life in general that maybe I'm spending time on, sinking time into, but are not necessarily where I want to go in the long run. I mean, I wonder, it's a thing of, okay, you wonder about chances. Well, maybe if I try this thing out and then keep going with it and then see how it goes, maybe it could lead to something really good. Um, it could be that it's a new area you try out and then you kind of discover. So I, I think that you should leave some room for that. But then I think I agree that there is also a place for making a decision and sticking to it. I've been learning a lot about media, um, in, media and different things in the past, uh, would I say, past month or two and what I've been hearing consistently is pick a niche find somewhere that's really really small and focus on that be the best in that but then I still I'm, fo I'm faced with this thing where I can do many things the question is which one do I pick you know but I think the important decision is to make a decision so yes it may be hard but choose one okay decide you're gonna stick with it even if it's for a time period stick with that one put all your energy into that one and get some, drive some value from that, as opposed to dabbling here and there and trying to grow different things. Because if you're trying to grow different things at the same time, it's difficult. It's difficult to do that. 
Whereas if you focused and chose one thing you wanted to, you know, focus on and be better at, um, you could grow, you could see um, great improvement. I remember um, when I started off my career as a data analyst, um, I, I, I literally poured myself into learning data visualization because I enjoyed it and I thought it's something I could really do and there was a demand. Even at the time when I started, I don't know if I knew how big a demand there was for it, but I just thought, you know, I want to pour myself into it. And so every day when I came back from work, I literally poured myself into tutorials, kept learning, kept learning, um, and I'd be up till way past when I should have gone to bed, even though I'd be going to work the next day, just to make sure I kept learning and went through a course. I think the course I went through was a, I think it was a 10 or 20 hour course. I can't remember exactly, but I was literally doing I was literally consistently doing it every single day and eventually it paid off. I mean, I was able to get um, contract jobs which were highly paid and that valued my skill and I was able to do that and um, make the clients happy, make myself happy with what came into my bank account. Um, but that came out of a focus on, okay, this is the one thing I'm going to focus on. You know, right now I do feel like I have a lot of things that maybe are a bit more fragmented. You know, I have and the thing is, the older you grow, with the, with more responsibilities you get, you do get that fragmentation. But then I think there's something to be said for carving out time to actually focus on the area or focus on one area that you want to see particular results in, you know, and then create focus time. So create protected time, whether it's um, waking up very early when everybody else in the house is asleep so that you can focus on that or um, maybe sleeping early and then waking up um, at a really random hour of the morning, maybe 2, 3 a.m., where, where it's quiet, where you can do the work, if that works for you, or going to a separate place, a different place where you know you can work and focus. But yeah, choosing that one thing and then focusing in that area. Um, wow. I mean, the <laughs> the Seth Godin book is a short book. It's only about, um, I mean, in audiobook terms, it's only about an hour and a half. For an audiobook, that's that's really small because normally I listen to audiobooks that are like eight hours long six eight hours ten hours long that sort of thing so for one and a half hours it isn't much but wow the book did hit me um, and the question now is what am I gonna do about it um, I have been I mean with all the things I've been learning about creating a niche and focusing on a micro niche I I have been thinking okay where what do I need to drop what do I need to focus on um, but this book kind of I packed a punch okay um it's, it's very simple and it's it's simple things that we know i think we all know to some degree um, but we don't necessarily um we don't necessarily bear it in mind we just kind of amble it along doing different things uh, yeah that needs to stop um, for me in particular so this is a learning point for me this is uh, another point in my learning journey that i need to consider and i need to do but it's, uh, I don't know, if, tell me, tell me for you, what do you think? What are the areas where you feel like, you know, this is where I'm going to double down on, this is where I'm going to focus on, and what are the areas that you think, you know what, maybe I just need to quit. Um, quit so that, I, not quit just because it's hard, but quit because I'm quitting to focus on something else that I'm going to persevere with and put in all my effort into. That is the thing to ask yourself. Um, yeah, it's been a very humbling listen it's not something new but it is something that I really need to keep at the fore I need to create a sticker literally somewhere um, in front of in front of my screen wherever I look every morning and just remind myself choose one thing focus on that and build on that um, and also making the right choice about the thing to choose as well I think is also really important <sighs> okay so another thing the book mentions anyway is that there's something called a cul-de-sac which is basically a dead end. If you're in a job that's a dead end where you're not learning, you're not earning, you're just kind of plodding along and there's no future, the time to quit is now. In fact, the time to quit was yesterday, but the next best time is now um, because there is no, there's no point if it's a dead end. Um, just because it's comfortable doesn't mean it's the right thing. You've got to step up. You've got to make a choice to stand up and actually make a change. You know, if you've been in a job for many, many years and you don't feel like you're growing and um, it's not getting you where you want to be financially, it's time to move, as simple as that. Um, now, the moving part obviously is not always as easy, you have to search for jobs and stuff, but actually start making the effort. Don't just say, oh, it's too hard. Again, 
knowing when to quit and when to stick stick to your guns and keep going. For me, you have to make the decision, first of all, that you're gonna you're gonna quit. You need to now figure out what the next step is, so what you need to do next to make sure that you, you can leave in a way that you're in a better off situation than when you first got there. Yeah, I just wanted to share this and challenge you. Like I said, the book, whew, the book hit me hard and I just had to record this and share. And hopefully this, this blesses someone, this kind of inspires someone to uh, make that change that you need to do, find out what it is that you need to quit and find out what it is that you need to actually double down on deciding for a season, this is where I'm gonna focus. This is where I'm gonna put in my effort because I know what I'm aiming towards and I know what the rewards are later on. But you gotta find something and then stick to it um, and find the things that you don't need in your life that are making you too fragmented and quit those. Anyway, this has been Aurea Pampa, um, giving you a bit of my journey in terms of the things I'm learning and the things I'm growing in. I'm hoping that it helps you and it inspires you to change and make a difference in your life. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share it with a friend or family. All right, take care. Bye.